These are the first two things. Again, everyone, the first two things we want to know are can I identify the question and can I identify the information? There's nothing you can do beyond that until that gets done because anything you try to do beyond that is just speculation. It's just guessing. If you don't know what you're looking for and you don't know what information you have to do to, you know, to use to your advantage, anything you try to come up with is a guess. So don't guess. Really work to make you know, facts and logic and reason lead the way for you here. That's the only way you're gonna get there. So here we go. Step one, read that question, the question sentence. What is it that I'm looking for? So it says, hey, if the project requires this many domino pieces, how many pieces are left to be placed? Okay, so they're gonna give you some information here. They're gonna say, hey, the project requires 15,400 domino pieces. That's information they're giving you. Again, the first step is what's the question? What do I wanna do? I don't care about the ifs, I care about the what's, the who, what, when, where, why, how many, which of the following, what am I looking for? And that is this right here. How many pieces are left? And before we continue, one of the main frustrations that so many people have with the ASVAB is not knowing what to study and how to study to begin with. So if you're one of those people that can do a good job if everything's lined up for you, then go ahead and join our program. We have all the classes, all the recordings, all the courses with practice questions, with videos, and you can text me all the way up until you pass. So that's how it works. It's very simple, straightforward, and it gets you to the score and the job you want. Check out the link in the description of this video to learn more and sign up now. So let me just write that down in English and you guys tell me if you agree with the way I did it. I'm just gonna write blank pieces left. Is that okay with y'all? Blank pieces left. Okay, great. That's all I'm looking for. How many pieces we have left? Everybody, is it true? Is it true that if we were there in person and we saw the box that said, hey, you need 15,400 pieces and that's what it looks like right now, could you effectively count how many pieces you have left if you were there in person? Now, I'm not asking you if you're gonna like it because 15,400 pieces, I don't, I don't care who you are, ain't nobody wanna do that. But theoretically, could you? Yes. So this problem first is solvable. This is doable, okay? You know, a lot of the times we tend to look at word problems and we tend to freak out because we don't know what to do. But first, I wanna tell you that this is doable. If we were there in person, we could just count it up. Now, there are techniques in math that we've learned to make it so that we're not sitting there like, you know, a baboon just counting tiles one at a time. You know, there's a much faster process and that's gonna be with percents here. So, what information do we have? How can we figure that out then? How can we find this magical shortcut? So what we see here is that, well, number one, we already wrote down something that they gave us. Number one, the project requires this many pieces. So everybody think about it like this. If you're trying to find out how many pieces you have left, would it be helpful to know how many pieces there are overall? Would that be helpful to you? Right, I would agree, yeah. like. That'd be pretty helpful, you know, instinctively talking. Yeah, that would be pretty helpful. So let's go ahead and write that down. So total 15,400 pieces. Okay, cool. And then over here, if I just read from the beginning, it says, hey, uh, you're using domino pieces to make art and you've successfully positioned 4% of the pieces. Okay, so let me write that down successfully positioned 4% of the pieces. Okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about this. Let's really have this conversation. Let's really try to understand, you know, what's going on here? What information do I truly have in the context of my formula? So let's think about it like this, everyone. You know, because we have this percent given to us. So it's natural to think that that might be the percent that we're going to use in the formula. That's fair. Now, if we look at the total 15,400 pieces, everybody, what would you categorize that as? Do you categorize that as the original, as the result? What is that to you? Right, that's going to be the original. 
right? You, you need a grand total of 15,400 pieces. So that's gonna be the original amount. Then the 4% of pieces that you have successfully positioned, sure, let's put that into the formula and let's see what happens. And I'm gonna show you why again, the main idea always wins. So let's plug in this formula here. The percent is 4% times the original 15,400 equals some result. Okay, everybody, what does that 4% represent? What does that 4% represent? Let me just zoom on in there for you. What does that 4% represent? Okay, the number of pieces successfully placed, the number of pieces, or the percent of the pieces used, the percent of pieces in place. Yes, all of that means the same thing. You're talking about the percent of the pieces that you have ready to go. Okay, so question, if we went ahead and plugged all that into the formula with the percent representing the pieces successfully positioned, if we solve this, is that gonna give us the answer we're looking for? No, because we're looking for the number of pieces left. Right, we talked about this, we said it, we said it. Let's just review this real quick in red. How many pieces are left? If the 4% represents the number of pieces that we've put down, that's not the same as how many pieces we have left. So you can see that there's something amiss here. There's something a little wrong here. And if you were to go ahead and solve this, I'm not saying that you're automatically wrong. What I'm saying is you're not done. There's a difference, everybody. There's a difference here. Just because you go ahead and do the 4% here doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means you're not done. Let me show you what I mean. If I want to apply the 4%, let's pretend to do it, everybody. So this is 4% placed. So everybody, 4% as a decimal. Help me out again. Take that decimal, move it to the left two times. What's that going to be? Appreciate you guys. It's going to be not 0.4, 0 0.04. Again, here's your decimal. Once, twice, 0 0.04. So with that, yep, that's what it's going to be. 0 0.04 multiplied by 15,400. Let's do the math. Let's see where it leads. Whatever. So here... times 0 0.04, let's go ahead and get it done. Zero times four, that'll be zero. Zero times four, that'll be zero again. Four times four, that'll be 16. Five times four, that'll be 20. Carry the one is 21. J, feel free to do it again. And then one times four, that's gonna be four. Carry the two, that's gonna be six. So with that, <laughs> so with that, that's gonna be 61600. Zero, zero. But what do we need to do again, remember? What do we do? We will move the decimal back. That's right. We'll go ahead and do that twice. Doesn't happen here, but it does here. One, two, one, two. And so we have ourselves saying 4% of 15,400, that's gonna be 616. Okay, sounds good. So let's plug that number in right there. My party people, uh, that's not the answer. Clearly, you look at your choices over here, that doesn't really look like 600. That doesn't even look like hundreds. So we're really, really off here, right? Let's take a look back at what we just did. But before we do that, pop quiz time. What's the main idea for percent word problems? When it comes to applying that percent formula, what is the main idea. You will, Fatmata. But what's the idea? That's right, Kai. The percent you apply is the result that you get. So if you want to understand this a little better, understand that main idea. The percent you apply is the result you get. We applied 4%, which is the pieces that were placed. So the 616, that result, that is the number of pieces placed. Everyone, 
if you know how many pieces you have placed and you know how many total pieces there are, how do you find out what's left? How do you find out what's left? Yeah, simple subtraction and we're done. The subtraction being the 15,400 total pieces minus the 616 pieces that we have placed, that's gonna give us the number of pieces left. Yes or no, before I continue, do you agree with that? If we have the total and we take away what's there, we figure out what's left. Perfect. So we're good to go. Remember my math party people, acing the ASVAB is not just about watching me do it. It's better that you practice as well. It's about watching, practicing, and mastering the material. And the best way to do that is to start off with my free practice test because it comes with video solutions so you can try it out yourself, see all the mistakes that you've made, and then keep raising your score with those video solutions, organizing yourself so you can lower that test anxiety and raise your score. No excuses, it's completely free. So go ahead and click the link there or in the description. That way you can get started, raise your score, and do everything you need to do. Let's ace the ASVAB, but let's get back to the problem after you're done signing up. So the first thing I notice is that this is gonna be ugly real fast already for the simple reason being that, hey, zero minus six can't do that. Can't do, can't borrow from another zero. You have this four here, but this six is already there. That's gonna be trouble too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just borrow from the five, make that 14, borrow from that to make it 13, to make that 10. Take away from that 10 to make nine, and this is gonna be 10 here. I told you, gonna be ugly. You gotta learn how to work with your numbers here when it comes to adding and subtracting large numbers. But with practice, you have 10 minus six, nine minus one, 13 minus six, four minus zero, and one. So we have ourselves 14,784 pieces left. And that is the answer. And so we both know this video just helped you with your test anxiety by just a little bit. And to keep lowering your test anxiety and keep raising your confidence, that's what my ASVAB All Access program is for. The link's right up here. Click it, watch the video on how it works, and you'll see exactly why thousands of my students have raised their scores and gotten the jobs they want. So click there, watch the video, and sign up to raise your score. I'll see you soon.